Yo, hey, what's up, guys? I'm coming to you with a quick video of this weekend's amazing Arizona Comic Con 2014. It's another convention that we have. We actually have two yearly. This is our first one. So it pretty much took place Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and throughout the whole weekend, I took little videos, little pictures here and there, which I'm going to show you. At the end of this video, I'm actually going to show you guys what I picked up at the convention. I got some pretty cool stuff, some autographs, some pictures, and... Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you at the end. You'll see, guys. In the meantime, it's just a quick little walkthrough. I'm going to be doing commentary. I'll try to make this short and sweet. Um, but as you can tell here, there are, of course, a lot of vendors, a lot of swag that you can pick up from T-shirts, you know, stuff that you can wear, a lot of stickers, a lot of toys, and, of course, a lot of comics. This is one specific co convention that I really enjoy going because it just has a lot of, it has a large vast array of things that you can buy not specifically oriented towards you know new toys or comic books it's just a lot of stuff which you'll see in these videos um, as you can tell right now currently I'm collecting a lot of stuff from comic books from vintage toys uh, just little doodads knickknacks I don't know movie posters autographs you'll see but in this video, like I said, it's not a very large Comic-Con compared to San Diego or any of the other ones. This one, actually, I was really surprised on how smaller it was compared to last year. Uh, they moved the convention. It was still in the Phoenix, in the Phoenix Convention Center downtown, but... Um, instead of normally being in the large convention center, which this one and then plus Phoenix Comic Con has been held, it was kind of held in a smaller one, maybe because not a lot of vendors uh, signed up or even, you know, uh, participated in this convention, so they had to move it to a smaller convention area, if that makes sense. But I was kind of surprised. I'm like, hey, this is kind of small, but yet um, I wasn't disappointed when it came to merchandise or at least things they had there. Uh, as you can tell, there are a lot of comic book vendors. Uh, the people, the crowd, it was crowded. It was it was crowded during some parts of the day, both Saturday and Sunday. More so on Sunday, it there was a larger crowd versus Friday and Saturday. Don't know why, maybe because of work or whatever other reasons, but Sunday was a little bit larger. Comic books, as you can tell here, there's a large variety, a lot of Silver Age, uh, Copper Age, and a lot of the newer Modern Age. These ones, more specifically, re uh, brought back a lot of memories of my collection when I used to have uh, these these newer Batman ones from the, the DC-52 and a lot of Harley Quinn uh, collection comic books that I've had. So anyways, it was a kind of a nice little nostalgic memory. Like, oh yeah, I remember I had that in my collection, but... But don't worry, guys. I'm still collecting comic books. I have a little vast, little small little collection going, but um, not really hardcore like I was before. Kind of just uh, spreading my options, more collecting towards vintage uh, uh, action figures. Anyways, these posters were hand-painted. These are really cool. I really love that Albert Einstein, and plus this Predator and Alien. They were really, really cool. That, that Predator one was already sold. And um, the Yoda, and then, of course, the Edward Scissorhands. Really cool. Here's a quick shot I did um, of, uh, of course, Robert Kirkman. Um, it was really quick, really fast. The guys here at, at uh, Amazing Arizona Comic Con did a really good job organizing and keeping the lines, keeping people straight, and not having you know anyone cut in. So it was really good. It was really organized. They had a lot of helpful members and volunteers that helped out with that. And here, this shot is kind of like the opening, the entrance of the Comic Con. A lot of big publishing vendors. Um, this one right here, pretty much one of the artists was doing a um, quick sketches for a Adventure Time, and that my daughter loves that comic book and show. So this was kind of really cool to to see him doing sketches. Um, crowd, like I mentioned earlier, was not that bad in some areas. I was really surprised, but as you can tell, again, large, vast of comic books. Um, a lot more modern than, of course, Silver Age and uh, Golden Age, but uh, eh, what do you expect? I mean, it's a convention, right? A lot of newer toys. Really quick peek, really quick view, looking around. Nothing really that caught my eye. Um, however, I did love this Hulk um, poster or stand-up. I asked about it if it was for sale, and it wasn't. So I would love to have that in my room. Uh, these were really cool, guys. These were actually handmade kind of pieces of artwork. Uh, a bunch of guys uh, got together and uh, pretty much created these these statues or figures 
Um, some of them are movable. Uh, heads do rotate, legs move, but some of them don't. Um, pretty much representing, you know, famous horror or at least uh, sci-fi type movies. Um, of course, you can tell right there is from the Alien movies. Right here is, of course, uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, which is really cool, really high price. I think it was like five or six hundred bucks. Um, it was really nice. Um, so, like I was mentioning, they have a large array of figures that you can just buy, you know, pretty much just either stand or stand on your desk, or they're not necessarily for play for younger kids, but more for decoration. Um, really cool, pretty much just welded nuts and bolts and screws to uh, come along. And these ones, more specifically the Yoda, I really wanted that Yoda. That was really cool. And guys, these are, these are you know, metal. They're really heavy. That Yoda, I think, was about like 20 or 30 pounds. It was really heavy. Um, other ones here, smaller ones, and they're really, really affordable. I would say maybe the smallest, maybe about $15, $20, a lot of $20 items. Uh, moving on up to $30 and $40, I purchased one, and I'll show you at the very end of the video which one I purchased. It's really cool. Uh, this Wally one here was really nice. I was debating whether or not to get it, um, but uh, my, at the very end, towards the end of the Comic Con, I was short on. on cash, so I kind of neglected not to get one, but. I'll probably contact these guys later on to see if I can probably get that Wally. There's a SpongeBob, pretty cool. Um, another different forms of Wally. Of course, you got your Doctor Who, your At At, your Hulk, and so forth. This line, guys, was on Sunday waiting for pictures of Michonne or at least uh, Denai. Um, it was a really long line compared to on Saturday. And unfortunately, guys, I was not able to take any pictures or video. They made it really clear that, hey, Denai does not want any videos or pictures taken of her. Well, of course, because she charged like 50 bucks. If you want a picture with her, you got to pay 50 bucks. <laughs> so that kind of makes sense. And the reason for that, they're saying, well, that's the only way we can get her because that kind of pays for her her, um, I guess her fee for showing up at conventions that she uh, pretty much uh, gets paid for taking pictures and autographs. Long story short, I paid 40 bucks for her autograph and then 50 bucks for pictures. So almost 100 bucks and then Sunday, like I said, there was a long line. So she made some good money there. Here again, guys, are some more pictures of these little uh, figurettes or at least these uh, little art pieces. Really cool. Um, these aren't one of a kind. I was told that the gentleman that makes these uh, more specifically, has kind of um, a nice stack of like, say maybe you'll have like maybe five or six Predators, but they're all a little different. So don't think that these are kind of manufactured through like an assembly line like machines. These are all handmade pieces of art. So I really enjoyed these. Um, I have the guy's uh, uh, contact information, which I'll show you here. And I'll probably end up buying some more later on just to have decorations in my house or at least, you know, take them to work. Uh, and so forth, but yeah, these are really cool. Bubba Fett right there, nice. Oh, I, I love that one, the Aliens one, especially the Aliens and Predators. Oh, I love those, those are really cool. And they're about five pounds, five to seven pounds, guys. They, they're heavy. So they're not something, if, well, let's put it this way, if you drop them, they won't break because <laughs> they're pretty much welded pieces of metal. And uh, that's the guy's contact info if anyone's interested. Okay, guys, everything just wrapped up in a clamshell. I know I should have done a lot more video, but I didn't. Um, I was really preoccupied with autographs, with the stuff that I bought, watching my daughter, making sure everything was, you know, just, I, I don't know. It just, I wasn't really focused and made it priority to do a lot of video or even pictures. There were a few pictures that I took, but kind of those are more personal, so I won't really put those up on video here on YouTube. Um, maybe later on, I'm not too quite sure. But anyways, in this one, I do apologize. There wasn't really a whole lot of video. That was pretty much it, like I just showed you guys. But what I mentioned in the beginning, I want to show you guys what I bought, what I brought home. One thing more specifically um, I want to talk about was one vendor there. One vendor that was selling a really nice array of vintage action figures. This is one that I picked up right here. This is an original, uh, I believe, 1989 uh, Krang action figure, and it's in really nice condition. 
really, really nice. Now, if a lot of you probably know, or at least don't know, his belly opens up, and of course, Krang is inside, just like in the cartoons, way back in the day where Krang would have this, he would be inside this robot automaton type figure, you know, kind of using it as a body, and of course, the figure would grow in size, and it was also in one of the Ninja Turtle video games, and it was really popular, and uh, unfortunately, when I was young, I never had a chance to get this, uh, only because, who knows, either he was sold out a lot of the times, so he was really hard to find, but oh yeah, speaking of hard to find, he does have his little antenna that always gets broken a lot. Um, plus, the figure, or at least the stickers in the back, are in really, really nice shape. I picked this up. I mean, he had it offered for about 100 bucks selling it. But of course, I bought a few other things, which I'm going to show you right now, and I made a really good deal. But this is one thing that I'm really glad I picked up, because uh, just recently off of eBay, I, sold a, I saw a couple sell for about 80 to 100 bucks. So I think I'm, you know, what I, the price I got it for, I think I'm okay. I'm all right. So that's one thing that I picked up. Another thing that I picked up here was a mint on card Bebop. Now this guy, this is the original soft head, I believe 11 back. Let's see if I can do this here. Uh, 11 back version of Bebop. Or is it nine back? One, two, three, there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's ten back. My bad, guys. I'm sorry. So this is the original ten back um, version of Bebop. And yeah, it is the soft head. There was one bit of information that I was just informed. Maybe you guys can vouch on that. But this is one piece of information I didn't know. Now, of course, we all know the soft heads and the hard heads, right? The soft heads mean that it was... When these first came out, the figures, they were the heads, the mold, the mold, or at least the plastic, if you want to say, um, was pretty much different than the later versions, only because, like I said, soft head meaning that you can actually squeeze the head and it's soft compared to the newer ones where the whole body plus the head are hard. Soft heads are easily identified by this punch hole. I didn't know that. The bigger the punch hole, if you have a bigger punch hole right here at the very top, that means it is not a soft head, it's a hard head. Can some of you guys vouch with that? Because I never heard that, but the guy that was selling these made his story, you know, pretty, pretty convincing. He showed me a few other versions of Bebop, or at least other characters, and sure enough, there was a larger gap or a larger hole up top. And he's like, hey, the larger ones are the hard heads, the smaller hole are the soft heads. And I'm like, well, let me see the back, and sure enough, it's a... You know, it was a 10 back, and the date there, of course, come on, focus, says 1988. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll believe you on that. And especially the price that he was offering it, you know, I couldn't beat it. Um, I know there are a few little issues up top. There's a few little, you know, as you can tell, little dents here and there. It is uh, completely sealed all the way around. And truthfully, it's a really nice uh, figure, or at least card. So I picked up this one, original Bebop from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle line, and he also had, I couldn't pass up, which was the original Rocksteady. I could not pass this up. Again, it's a soft head, small, see, both of them are, let's see if it picks up, both of them are small punch holes, and of course, again, the 10 back, uh, 1988. So I was really, really surprised that he had both of them and really um, just, uh, if you want to say the word giddy, you know, I'm like, oh, wow, I remember these two. I remember, you know, how I got them. I think I told the story to you guys a while ago. I'll spare you guys a story just to keep this movie, or at least this video, uh, short. But I remember getting these from my mother, and um, yeah, I'm really happy that I have them. This one also is a little bit more banged up. There's a big old dent right there, and then plus, it, it, it seems to be coming undone from the very bottom. Uh, there, the, there's um, a gap, as you can tell. But again, I remember getting these figures, some of these Ninja Turtle figures, and some of them, some of them having gaps at the very a bottom way back in 88 and 89 I remember that so I don't know if that's just a factory flaw because the bubble the, the actual bubble so far down on the card who knows but um, I don't plan on sending these to AFA I'll just keep them as is I might get some type of uh, like a, 
um, a star case for them or some type of case just to keep them protected but I'm really glad I picked these two up. Another thing I picked up I think you guys just saw was the Ninja Turtle party wagon. Let me put this to the side here. Hold on one second. Okay guys so funny story really quick and short. I bought this I did a video a week later on it I had it up on YouTube along with my Ghostbusters Ecto-1. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen that video already, but if not, I'll put a link towards the bottom. Anyways, I did a video about a week or two later. I ended up selling it at a local collector's market, the one I always go to, the one I've done videos in the past. If you want to take a look, you know, scroll through my other videos. Anyways, I sold it to a gentleman who bought both of them for a pretty good price. I go to this convention, and what do you know? It's the same one that I bought off of eBay, the same one that I sold <laughs> a week before Christmas. The reason why I sold it before Christmas was because, you know, I wanted some extra cash, you know, for Christmas presents or if something came up during Christmas, the holidays. I wanted some extra cash, so the reason why I sold it. And it was a really, really nice one. Again, guys, if you want to see what it looks like, if you want to see the instructions and sticker sheet, take a look at my other video. But anyways, I was really surprised. I did not mention to the, the guy, the seller, hey, man, I had that. I'm the one that sold it to the person that sold it to you. Uh, only reason why I didn't say that because I wanted to get the price. I know what I paid for it. I know what I sold it for. So I know he must have paid around probably a hundred bucks or a little bit less for it. So I'm like, well, I want to get around that price. So anyways, I bought that. These two uh, mint on card figures along with the, the Krang for a really, really good price. Everything, he had pretty much everything listed for about I think like $375, $400 sticker price, but I talked them way down, uh, way below that, only because of the of the, the dents on both Bebop and Rocksteady. It's not really all the way sealed on the very bottom there. And then of course you have your normal wear and tear on Krang, but I'm really happy on actually what I paid for everything. I'm really stoked. So these are going to stay in my collection, hopefully for a long time, unless I get that itch to start another I don't know, another hobby and sell them, but these are going to remain in my collection, so sorry guys, nothing's for sale. The next thing I want to show you guys is pretty much my autograph that I got from Robert Kirkman. And this is it. Um, a lot of you guys have already seen that video where I received that Walking Dead number 19, where it, it was CGC graded 9.6, but it was opened. You know, it was a signature series, the case was opened, that whole ordeal went by just fine. I got my money back, I sent it back to the guy, that's it, that's the last I've heard from him. So I purchased another one off of eBay, and this one I would have to say is about 9.6, 9.4, you know, some rough edges, really small little wear where you can see the white there, and there's another one in the bottom and that's pretty much it and then on the back there are two small indents of course you know where your fingers where you you're holding the comic book and you're flipping through sometimes your fingers will make indents on the back cover there's two small indents that didn't break the color of the back page but yet you can still see it and that may bring down the grade to a 9.4 I'm not as sure I'm not 100% sure but you know what I didn't worry about you know the grade, or I'm not going to send this off to CGC. They were there. Desert Wind Comics was there, but I didn't want. I'm like, you know what? I want this for me. I want it, you know, for my collection. I plan on putting this in a display case, along with. Hold on one second. Along with uh, these Michonne, or at least these Walking Dead figures that I uh, bought a while back. I think I showed these on a video, kind of just talking about them, what I purchased. But yeah, I have the other zombie too, which. Uh, I'll put in display all together. Really cool. I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> the last thing, guys, I want to show you of what I had autographed. Um, so that's by Robert Kirkman, of course. And the last thing I want to show, or actually, I don't even think I'm going to be able to show it. Um, I purchased this off of eBay. It's a pretty large, I think it's like a 14 by 26 poster of uh, Michonne, the actual... Uh, uh, the actual TV version of this picture, okay? So, again, there's Michonne and the two zombies, but the picture was taken of the show. 
um, real life actors. Okay, I'll you know let me put a picture up right now. Okay, so that is what I bought, and I had it, that that poster autographed by Kirkman, as well as Deny Guerra, I think her last name is. So it's really cool, guys. I plan on getting this uh, this poster framed in the near future, and then maybe hung up in my uh, living room or in the hallway. I don't know, um, but I'm really stoked that I that I got this. It's really cool. And that's pretty much, oh, you know what? One thing else I bought, <laughs> you know what? I'll take a picture of it. Um, it's a quick little snapshot of, here, let me show you. Those two t-shirts I bought, I had to get them. I love that brown one where it mentioned that killing zombies like a boss. I bought that, and then plus that Hello Kitty one where she's a zombie. Hello Kitty's a zombie. I bought that for my daughter. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's all the swag that I came home with. I mean, I would have came home with a lot more, but being the fact that I bought, you know, the, the turtle stuff kind of, you know, took a lot of my money, but... That's pretty much it. So, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hit me up. Let me know. Thanks for watching. And expect a longer, maybe more enjoyable video next time. I do apologize again, but thanks for watching, guys, if you stuck it through. Thanks. Peace.